Welcome back to the Gas Behavior Playlist on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. In this video, we're going to discuss the boil temperature and also relate it to one of our real gas equations of state, which is the virial equation of state. All right, so what is the boil temperature? The boil temperature, which we normally abbreviate T sub B, it is the temperature at which you can treat a real gas as an ideal gas because the behavior uh, is similar enough to that of an ideal gas. Now the physical reason behind this is that the, when you have a real gas that has achieved its boil temperature, all of the attractions within the gas molecules it's, themselves are completely balanced by the repulsions of those same molecules. Remember, when we have real gas behavior, we have to consider attractions, we have to consider repulsions. And for example, in the van der Waals equation of state, the attractions were accounted for by that A factor and repulsions by the B. All right? Whenever we have an ideal gas, we completely neglect those attractions and repulsions because we assume no intermolecular interactions. But at the boil temperature, the behavior of that real gas should mimic that of uh, the ideal gas. Okay. Now, we're going to show here why this is the case using a simple derivation. And the derivation is going to be using this equation right here, which is the virial equation of state. Okay. Now, one important thing to notice about the virial equation is we have this power series term over here in parentheses. 1 plus b, which is a number over the molar volume, plus c over the molar volume squared, plus d over the molar volume cubed. And this pattern is going to repeat out to infinity. Now, it's important to realize that as these numbers, beginning with b over the molar volume, as we proceed to the right, each term becomes increasingly negligible. Okay? They contribute less and less to the overall pressure of the gas. So we can say that this c over v squared term, or c over the molar volume squared, term, this contributes much less than the B over molar volume, and then we can say that D over the molar volume cube cont contributes far less than either of these terms. So in general, for most situations, any term past the B over the molar volume term, which include the C, D, E, and if we had F, and so on and so forth, those are going to contribute so negligibly that under most conditions we can just neglect these. Okay, And in fact, in a lot of cases, you normally truncate this either after the B term or after the C term in any case. But we're going to, for this derivation, throw out everything after the B term. So throw out C, D, E, and so on and so forth. And so if we get rid of all this stuff in this equation right here and move over here, we should have the pressure times the molar volume equals RT times just one plus B over the molar volume. Now, in all reality, this b is not necessarily just a constant. Um, it's actually, it can be a function of temperature. Okay. Now, one important property to realize is this constant b. When the temperature is the boil temperature, T sub b, I have it T sub boil here. But at the boil temperature, this b term is zero. Okay, so if the temperature was above the boil temperature or below it, this would be a non-zero term. But at the boil temperature, this B term goes to zero. Okay, so I have here substituted in the boil temperature. P times V is equal to RT plus one, or times one plus B as a function of the boil temperature over the molar volume. And this, this whole B term right here goes to zero. And so if zero over the molar volume is still zero. So all you're left with is P times the molar volume equals RT times one, which is just RT. And that is P times V, which is P times the molar volume equals RT. Now, if you divide through both sides by the molar volume, you actually get the ideal gas equation or one form of it, which is P is equal to RT over the molar volume. Now, if you remember that the molar volume is simply the volume divided by the number of moles, and you express it that way, that gets you right up back to the typical, or at least the most typical form of the ideal gas equation of state, which is that the pressure is equal to nRT over V. And so this is just a simple derivation showing that, assuming you neglect all the terms past V, that if you use the boil temperature in this virial equation of state, the B term goes to zero, and you essentially are at 
the ideal gas equation. Now remember what the boil temperature is. is the temperature at which a real gas behaves ideally, which makes sense because we assumed the boil temperature and derived the ideal gas equation from the virial equation of state. Now what you can also do is use this, a graph similar to this, where we have on the vertical axis the compression factor z plotted against the pressure p on the horizontal axis. And you see several curves here. On the top in red we have a high temperature. This green one in the middle is the boil temperature, and the blue one on the bottom is a low temperature. Now it turns out that the boil temperature is typically reached um, under three conditions. First of all, the pressure ought to be very low, should approach zero, so we should be on the left side of the uh, horizontal axis over here, okay? And if you take the derivative of the compression factor with respect to pressure, um, it should approach zero, meaning the, the slope of the tangent line of this curve should be as flat as possible. And if you use this green curve and move to the left, you see that the slope is getting flatter and flatter, and theoretically, right here where my mouse is, it should be a horizontal tangent line, okay? And whenever you follow this curve, and as it flattens out and flattens out, the point where it should be flat completely where this derivative, derivative z with respect to p, is zero, that corresponds exactly to a compression factor z of one. And if you remember what the compression factor is, the compression factor is a measure of the ideality of a gas. Um, or the reality of a gas if you want to consider it that way. So if you have a compression factor Z that is not one, meaning it's bigger than one or less than one, that implies that you have a real gas. But if your compression factor is one, that means you're dealing with an ideal gas. Okay. So this is another way to look at the boil temperature. It's typically achieved when you have these three conditions met. So you can achieve the boil temperature at low pressure, and you also want the derivative of the compression factor with respect to the pressure to be zero, and the compression factor will in turn go to approximately one. Okay. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of intuition on what the boil temperature is and ultimately understand that even though it's typically not listed this way in many textbooks, it's derived from specifically and defined from the virial equation of state. Okay? Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.